Ever wondered how to keep your network secure from internal threats? Well, let's dive into a method known as network segmentation. Picture this. Instead of having one large open network, we break it down into smaller, more manageable pieces, much like slicing a pizza. This is network segmentation. Its purpose? Threefold. First, it reduces congestion by limiting the number of devices communicating on a single network segment. Second, it enhances performance, since fewer devices mean less traffic and faster data processing. Finally, and most importantly, it improves security. Think about it. If a cyber attacker manages to infiltrate your network, they'll have free reign to wreak havoc everywhere, right? Not if you've segmented your network. This method confines them to one small segment, preventing unauthorized access to other parts of your network and limiting the scope of potential attacks. That's why understanding network segmentation is vital, but how do we test its effectiveness? So, we know that network segmentation is crucial, but how do we ensure it's doing its job correctly? Well, that's where network segmentation testing comes into play. This process serves as a validation tool for your network segmentation efforts. It's like a safety check, ensuring that your carefully crafted segments are working as intended, and that there are no misconfigurations or vulnerabilities that could be exploited. Imagine putting up a series of walls in your home to protect each room from potential hazards. You'd want to make sure each wall is sturdy and secure, right? Network segmentation testing is essentially the same concept, but for your digital home. By regularly testing your network segments, you're not just checking for potential weak points, you're also maintaining a proactive stance towards your cybersecurity. This way, you can identify and address issues before they become serious problems. Now, it's time to dive into the actual process of network segmentation testing. The first step in network segmentation testing is network mapping. This is where we delve into the intricate web of your network, identifying its different segments and understanding their unique functions. It's akin to a cartographer charting unexplored territory, except our territory is digital. Here we're not just looking at the locations of the segments but also the role they play in the grand scheme of the network. We analyze servers, workstations, routers, switches, and any other devices that form part of the network. We also identify the controls in place. This involves understanding the security measures that govern the flow of information between these segments. Are firewalls in place? How about intrusion detection systems or access control lists? We need to know all these details to build a comprehensive map of your network. This map then serves as a guide, allowing us to navigate through the network efficiently. With a clear map of the network, we can proceed on to the next step, penetration testing. Having the network mapped out, we can now try to penetrate the different segments. This is where the fun begins. Penetration testing, or pen testing for short, is the process of trying to gain unauthorized access to different segments of the network. It's a bit like trying to break into your own house to see how secure it is. In the world of cybersecurity, pen testing is akin to a simulated cyber attack. The goal is to understand how a potential hacker might exploit vulnerabilities in the network. It's like a dress rehearsal for an actual attack, only here the goal is to strengthen defenses not to cause damage. So how does it work? Well, pen testing is essentially a three-step process. The first step is reconnaissance. This is where you gather as much information as possible about the network. This could be anything from the type of software being used to the security measures in place. It's like casing the joint before a heist. The second step is scanning. This involves using tools to scan the network for potential vulnerabilities. Think of it like looking for an unlocked window or a weak spot in the fence. There are a plethora of tools available for this purpose, ranging from open source software like Nmap and Wireshark, to commercial offerings like Nessus and Acunetics. The third and final step is the actual penetration attempt. This is where you try to exploit the vulnerabilities identified during the scanning phase, it's the equivalent of trying to pick the lock or climb over the fence. Again, there are numerous tools available to assist with this, including Metasploit and Burp Suite. But remember the goal here isn't to cause harm, it's to identify weaknesses so they can be fixed. It's about making the network more secure, not less. And it's important to note that pen testing should always be done ethically, and with proper permissions in place. After attempting to penetrate the network, the next step is to analyze the results. It's time to sift through the data, identify the vulnerabilities, and start patching those security holes. With the penetration testing complete, it's time for the most crucial part, 
result analysis and remediation. This stage is akin to a detective piecing together clues from a crime scene. We sift through the data generated during the penetration testing, looking for telltale signs of successful penetrations. These could be anything from unexpected access to sensitive data, to unauthorized changes in system configurations. Each successful penetration indicates a vulnerability, a chink in our network's armor that needs to be addressed. Identifying these vulnerabilities is only half the battle, however. We also need to pinpoint their root causes. Often these are due to misconfigurations, perhaps a firewall rule that's too lax, or a poorly configured network device. Sometimes they're due to outdated software or hardware, lacking the latest security patches, and occasionally they're due to fundamental flaws in our network architecture. Once we've identified the vulnerabilities and their root causes, we can start the remediation process. This is where we fix the issues we've discovered, strengthening our network against future attacks. Remediation can take many forms. It might involve tightening up firewall rules or installing the latest security patches. It could require replacing outdated hardware or even redesigning parts of our network architecture. Often, it will also involve educating our staff about good cybersecurity practices to prevent human errors from creating vulnerabilities. And finally, we validate the remediation measures. We want to make sure that not only have we fixed the identified vulnerabilities, but we've also not introduced new ones in the process. This involves rerunning our penetration tests and comparing the results to our initial findings. If we've done our job well, we should see fewer successful penetrations, and those that do occur should be less severe. With the vulnerabilities addressed, we've successfully completed a network segmentation test. Our network is now stronger and better prepared to withstand cyber attacks. But remember, cybersecurity is a never-ending process. We must continually test, analyze, and improve our defenses to stay one step ahead of the ever-evolving cyber threats. So, what have we learned today? We've unpacked the concept of network segmentation, its significance, and the crucial process of network segmentation testing. We've dove into network mapping, penetration testing, and analysis and remediation of results. Network segmentation testing is a vital process in ensuring your network security. Remember, a well-segmented network is a secure network.